My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, we were talking about some heavy hitter comics, man. We did X Force One, five point whatever million copies. The Death of, of uh, Superman, four million copies. Let's take it down a notch. Do something a little less popular. But first, what do you got? I'm on Patreon, patreoncom slash Rug. I'm showing off a wrestling zine that's out of print, but if you join my Patreon, you can download a PDF of this, and it's drawings of wrestlers I've done for WWE, for commissions, uh, for my own amusement, and that's basically my Patreon is full of artwork, uh, out of print zines, process notes, things of that nature. There are even notes on cartoonist kayfabe episodes. So patreoncom slash Rug. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor is where we're serializing the Red Room comics right now. Three books get you the archive. I got two uh, complete stories up there right at this very minute. And uh, new strips go live every Tuesday. But here's the thing. Uh, we really have link trees in the description below. And uh, starting January 20th, you're going to be able to uh, pre-order the actual print copies, uh, the print comic of Red Room, which is going to be coming out. Oh, I guess I can't even tell you, say that until the press <laughs> release comes out, man. Uh, we're in a weird stasis right now, but the idea is murder is happening on the dark web for fun and profit. People are watching these crazy videos, pledging bitcoins to have their sick uh, requests processed, and uh, this kind of would be the result of uh, some of those requests. That's a good uh, that's a good appetizer to launch us into this uh, this this hell spawn. I believe there are red rooms in the spawn universe. Yeah, man. So let's talk about it, man. Spawn number one, Todd McFarlane comes back out of retirement, man. Uh, to to sort of uh, help spearhead the Image Comics revolution. Yeah, no doubt about it. Very iconic issue. Not the first Image release, but probably the biggest, noisiest. Certainly sold the most of the of the Image Comics when it launched. And like you say, McFarlane coming out of retirement was a huge story. I mean, that guy was the hottest artist at the time. I think history has uh, overlooked that a little bit as he goes into the toy direction and you know Jim Lee flourishes and Rob Liefeld, you know all these things. But at the time, hottest hottest artist in comics, and he wasn't working in comics. So when he comes back, it is a big, big deal. You know, quickly, you skip by that cover. I just want to point out Ken Stacy doing the painted version of this cover. Ken Stacy, we looked at whenever we looked at the Steve Rude Space Ghost, yeah. one of my favorite color, you know, examples ever. Stacy, uh, you can find examples of him doing full comics art in Marvel Comics and different places, but I always associate him as like airbrush and painting and stuff. And apparently so does Todd McFarlane because he hires him to do this cover of his big return. It's a fun thing too, man, because uh, lots of, you know, Steve Olive computer color on the inside, but we're going to have practical blue line color for the cover, man. You want this, man? That's not radial blur. Stacy busted out his air compressor and airbrush. Yeah, it's an interesting time period because it's such early days of computer coloring. And these guys show up, especially McFarlane, it seemed like. And the plan was, I'm going to make the best looking comic out there. And, you know, that applies to production. It applies to paper stocks. All these details that, like, Marvel was skimping on, McFarlane was going to go the other way. So this is kind of the most cutting edge you could do in, uh, in 1992. And it changes fast. As everybody ramps up their digital coloring, this starts to look obsolete within probably two years. But at the time, this would have been cutting, cutting edge visually. I would say bite your tongue on that uh, that uh, obsolete part, man. That shit was holding steady for a while. Uh, but look, man, we got the Moo Crew. Todd McFarlane, Tom Orzakowski, Steve Olive. Like, they would promote themselves as the Moo Crew to uh, Comic Cons and shit. This is a great example of what I'm saying. McFarlane went out and was like, who's the best letter? Tom Orzakowski does the number one selling book, X-Men. Let's bring him on. Who's the best colorist? Steve Olaf, I think, you know, heads and shoulders above, especially when it comes to the cutting edge and doing digital. had been working on Akira and, and pioneering the use of the computer for color. McFarlane puts together a top-notch A number one list, like spare no expenses. I'm sure those dudes got paid well for their work on these books. Last note on the credits. Dedicated to Jack Kirby. We've talked a lot about Jack Kirby on this station, and, and you know, I'm reading this in real time. I was probably 14, 15 at this point. This is an example of like these guys shining the spotlights on who should I be looking at? Sure, yeah. Because I didn't I didn't have a shelf of Jack Kirby comics at this point, but seeing this kind of stuff like issue number 1 dedicated to Jack Kirby, mental note, go find some Jack Kirby comics. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said that too because there's a pinup in the back by George Perez and and you know that's another name that yep. a young kid is going to see and and when you go to the flea market, you see some Perez comics. I saw that pinup, you know. Yeah. All the old heads are going to be like, "Oh, you fucking kids." 
you 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 turds everybody yeah the old people say that the young people are like why don't you just type it into google <laughs> it was hard to track these guys down you know you'd had to find like scraps and and these are these that's real knowledge to hear like yeah go find jack kirby here's my thesis on on this issue and and just the premise of of spawn dude this is the hot topic century three mall version of faust it Faust is a huge comic right at this moment. Uh, Faust is mentioned and brought up in a lot of the wizard magazines in those early days, which was a big shocker. Uh, Faust uh, wizard covers and junk like that. But that's a hardcore comic. You had it before it was uh, legally permissible. And I'm younger than you and I had it. So that lets you know sort of the, the universe that we operated in. So Todd McFarlane, you know, he's a superhero dude. He's going to give you something that isn't more controversial than any Marvel comics from the day until you get to issue five when, you know, the ice cream man is chopping off little kid fingers and gluing them on the wall. But you're getting a, basically a tongue-in-cheek superhero story that, um, you know, is playing around a little bit with, with I mean, it's a Faustian deal that Spawn yeah, has literally. made. Literally. Yeah, I, I think you're right about those influences, Ed, because obviously Spawn bears resemblance to Spider-Man. Why wouldn't, you know, that that was, we're talking about numbers, you know, Spider-Man being the biggest selling comic uh, in 1990, whenever it comes out, you know, setting records. So you don't want to go too far away from what, what brought the, who you brought to the dance, right. whatever that expression is. Right. So, you know, you do see that mashup of like, let's get into the dark with, with Faust reference, but let's also keep that Marvel comics. That's who I want to buy. I want to sell a lot of these. Right. So those guys that are buying 8 million X-Men. Let me show them something that they understand that makes sense within that world that I can sell to them too. After reading this, also, uh, it it feels just like you know this is a tongue in cheek you know superhero comic uh, in the same kind of tradition as any Marvel comic, a Stan Lee comic of the sixties. It's just this is an updated version for a kid who grew up in nineteen ninety one ninety two. You know, it has has everything you need. But, uh, you know, with all the stuff I've been studying about, just like the craft of writing and and the mechanics of putting together a story, basically everybody agrees. Act one is easy. Like, they they say stuff like, all writers can get a good act one out of themselves, man. It's it's about tying things up. That's the, uh, the challenge and the part where you got to put on your real writer's hat, man. And this issue, just setting everything up, man. This, to me, is the first really awesome-looking page. Yeah. Which surprised me on the reread. I was pretty underwhelmed with this comic on the reread. Mm -hmm. And some of it is because we've been through this a thousand times. Sure. You know, we look at artist editions. There's lots of... This is something I've looked at a lot throughout my life and thought about what works. But it surprises me that, you know, that, like, there are several of these pages that are kind of background underwhelming those pages right and then you get here and you start to see like okay mcfarlane the designer mcfarlane the the, the cool artist starts to come out but it, it's, it's interesting how this issue works and i think your summary of it is spot on everything you've said describes it really well uh i don't know i was disappointed in the reread um <laughs> a little bit because there isn't too much here no not at all man it, i mean this is you know part one of four i think you might even say here no i guess not but it is part one of four um, he's teasing you for a while, not not giving you too much of the, the costume until, boom, there it is, man. Little Eddie P, fully on board. But check this shit out, dude, because, like, I come a little later. Well, here, man, at least rotate that for the background, yeah. everybody. The, I, the image staple of rotating your pages. <laughs> I come a little later, man. I, I discover this stuff, uh, issue five, at, from the flea market, and the first new issue that was available in comic shops when I discovered comic shops, issue eight. So I discover the comic, uh, I start picking it up, starting with issue eight, but the speculator shit is still kind of going on, right? I ain't paying $15 for Spawn number one. It's unbelievable Suck what I nuts. think of that too, considering how many of these were sold in yeah. hindsight. Like, so, so, I, so I had homeboys who um, were early adopters, who were, who were there at the moment, man. So this is the 1991, 1992 version of CBR Files bootleg comics, whatever you want to call them, man. This is one of the wildest mm -hmm. things. Also, by the way, these Spawn drawings were uh, a result of seeing Spawn at school, like from somebody's comic or something, and trying to remember what it looked like. I, like when I got home, I tried to remember what I saw and like record well it. Well done. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> so like you could see that's all wrong and stuff. But this right here, man... Uh, I'm not paying $15, but what I will pay for 
is two cents a copy at Office Depot. Let me borrow your issue. I'm going to like crease it up a little bit. Is that okay? It's okay? Cool, man. And I made, I made Xeroxes of the first two issues. Color Xeroxes. Yeah, right, man. I've like, got those like, little stinky markers, man. They run out after like three pages. Look That's that wild. Stuff. This is how I read it for years and years and years, man. Like the copy that we're going I can't through that I have. That. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got, you know, for a dollar or less. That part I believe. All right. But the attention to uh, photocopying and even coloring some of those pages. Wow. <laughs> this is funny. This, you know, like this is your big moment, right? This is kind of what you're paying for whenever you're buying a Todd McFarlane Spawn comic. You want these kind of big money shots. Yeah. But this is him like declaring. He's kind of monologuing in his word balloons or caption boxes leading up to this recapping his origin and now he's going to go try to find his ex-wife or his you know his widowed wife that's his mission that's what he's declaring in this <laughs> absurd pose good lighting yeah i would be laying like in a ball on the floor sad crying whenever i was going through that mon internal monologue <laughs> but not him yeah see the, the cia gives you an extra set of tools man that you ain't gonna they be do. whimpering they too do. much it's a good coping mechanism. Same with Twitch uh, established in there, and they have their comedic rapport. You know, they it's, do. It's, it's classic, you know, fatty and skinny, Laurel and Hardy. The full moon is present. Yes. Yes. I, I don't think he's ever drawn a half moon or anything <laughs> like that. Never che do something half ass. Check out this great stuff, man. Oh, I love man. this stuff. I could do this all day. We could do full episodes on this shit. Marvel Investor Kit <laughs> <laughs> includes a grading guide, a price guide, a plastic bag, storage box. Five valuable Marvel comics and more. They don't even tell you what the valuable joints are. How, how much you want to bet Wonder Man 1 is in that shit? Sable, Silver Sable number one. Oh, I bet they're lousy. And right below it, I mean, look at all of this stuff. Marvel 92 swimsuit special. Ridiculous. And Marvel Universe number 1 to 20. Do you know what these are? I guess that's uh, four bucks per issue. I, th I think I think I do know. I think they're the... Uh, squ the um Three That's, hole punch okay. uh, character guides that has the front side and back view, and then on the back there's yeah. the uh, synopsis and character bios. I, I think that is what that is. Not a hundred percent sure. How about the Spider Man poster book that you can buy, and it's all McFarlane art. I don't even get a copy. <laughs> I'm going to in invent Image Comics. Yeah. Not one copy. I ordered from them at some points. So. From this American comic Yeah, thing? yeah, I ordered from everything. Because, I mean, I'm living in, you know, middle of nowhere, no comic shops anywhere, and seeing this stuff listed every now and then, I would get, get scraped together some money and order this. I would just fantasize, man. Like, I would get, like, 20 bucks after chores and stuff and just be like, well, I could get four of these $5 comics. But the truth is, I, I had no ability to, like, send away and wait. I would rather just go down to the corner store and buy some it comics. would always bite me if you know if you're buying back issues it'd be one thing but i would be buying like you know spawn or whatever and by the time that package arrived i had found it somewhere else to end up with doubles of these things <laughs> this is kind of, okay so this is the first this is spawn in action yeah again something that you want in these comics so give us some uh you know g give us that moment and it makes me think, like, Frank Miller's going to write a gang story for Spawn, Yeah. Uh, you know, a year later. I wonder if it was like, hey, Frank, here's Spawn, here's some reference stuff. And, and Frank looked at the issue and was like, all right, gang, gang war. Right. <laughs> Let's take a look at this heinous chick, man. Oh, I guess we got another page. This, The beat to this is really good, man. You know, throw the dude out the window. That's a good pose kind of grimacing against our guy and then just has like a little speck of power and you that it's the it's the little cloud that sells it man you feel it dancing yes and you just imagine they're hypnotized watching it the whole way like that's a good little storytelling piece and then boom yeah and the glasses it, it that again calls back to frank miller dark knight for me yeah there's, there's a moment where the guy's yanked out and the, and the glasses like are uh floating or whatever hold up here so i think i've i figured out how you got a deal on this on this issue of spawn you're missing your centerfold poster oh man it's been pulled out, but here's something to uh here's something to look at these the ads tapes. were part of the books you know like for me i was reading every single word that was printed in these comics and this is how you would start to see like some context for again who these guys are i think it's interesting that sergio aragonis is the third video in there you know liefeld mcfarlane and sergio uh, kind of cool to see him listed there, but we all remember these videos. Oh, yeah, man. We we would watch these shits every day at the Qbert school, man. Kids love chains. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? One of the fashionista reporters says as much. They talk about the ghost yes, cape. Yes, yes. And they're like, but those chains and spikes, no. 
There's nice. the back part of that centerfold. Uh, oh, one shoot. of the biggest Comic Con uh, events ever was that Chicago Comic Con where the Image guys like it had become a phenomena, and I think this was their first big public outing, and everybody was there, and it was thousands of people, right? Like over they had a mile to set long it up lines. Outside. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, kind of a cool piece of history. Fire there. codes don't abide by a million people in one Imagine building. Imagine being in that position, like you're these cartoonists, and you're like, you know what? I I should own. I should get a bigger piece of this. If they do a poster book, I should get paid for it. And so we're going to start our own thing. And then you go to Chicago Comic Con and there's over a mile long line that they have to have their own security organizing and stuff. Like, we what were are right. you thinking? We were right. Head spinning, man. It's a wonder those guys kept it together as well as they all did. Sure. Because sure. that's rock That's rock star shit. It is, man. It is. And I do like to think of, you know, Todd, Rob, and Jim as being in the exact same position, uh, kind of starting out, like... Once you hit a certain income stream in a way, like, and you're starting a new business, and it's comics, what are you going to do? Like, spend a couple extra dollars on, on promotion or something? It's a fucking comic. So it's like, they start at the same position, and after all these years, it's it's interesting to see how their three trajectories have gone so far different. Uh, when it comes to financial gain, I mean, McFarlane, you know, stayed true to his entrepreneurship, and he's the winner. Like, last time I checked, like, $300 million net worth. Um, you know, that's, that's the winner when it comes to, uh, the money game. All right, man, you ready to see what, what this, uh, what this damsel in distress looks like, dude? You ready? All right. It's Miley Cyrus, uh, nowadays, man, on that last episode of Joe Rogan. That hair. <laughs> and that grizzly-ass voice. Look at them eyeballs all together, close together. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's some interesting drawing there for sure. Weird moment for Spawn, right? Having, like, the breakdown after he rescues this woman and yeah. then she's comforting him. That's a pretty peculiar scene. Here's Uncle Todd reminding you that he drew Spider-Man comics. Right? That's hard to understand. How do you put a spy... I mean, that's a spider web. That's not even pretending to be barbed wire or something. I don't know what else would make sense at this funeral, but that's 100% a spider web. Yeah, yeah, he's just reminding you. Wow. You know, he's just got to get that kink out. Like, it's a, it's a motor response. Could be, yeah, I guess so. Back to these talking heads, which, of course, McFarlane doesn't invent, but this is a piece that runs through several of the image books early on as a way to just exposition. Yeah, and, and one of the interesting things, probably the only interesting thing he ever did with these heads is, like, this is, you know, the modern-day version. The earlier version was 87, so he's given us... Time has passed. You think Sin City was out? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, it's got that vibe. I marveled at this drawing a whole lot. I love yes. the little meatball head, the meatball hand. Good lighting. Good burst. It's a good hand. That's a hard position to draw and especially to make it look kind of interesting. You can do a version of that where it's just the outline of the fingers and that's it. Yeah. So uh, when a lot to figure out there. When Todd's talking about drawing hands, three peanuts. You got to draw three peanuts. <laughs> That Rust ad is funny because I think Rust was uh, was where the first McFarlane Spawn ad is credited to. I, I don't believe that to be the first true Spawn printing. Oh, it's definitely not. It's uh, but Rust was one of those. So it's almost like an ad swap with Rust. We we uh, we uncovered the the true story, man. Like like the first Spawn appearance isn't that Wizard magazine. It precedes that Malibu Sunshine by six months. Yeah, it's a long gap. It goes Malboja. And Malboja really talks like a dude just like from your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Simmons, if you think you have problems now, I promise you'll have trouble. Your troubles have just begun. That's hilarious. You know, it's yeah, like, it it's like, just a dude. It's yeah. like my little brother would say that. Like when we were like, your troubles have just begun. I'm telling dad. Hilarious. There's your full moon. Yes, of course. A couple of ticks off the spawn meter. And then uh, let's more with some Del Keown. Indeed. I was so into Del Keown. Like, I was reading Hulk at the time into it. But when Pitt gets announced for Image, yeah, man, cut the nose off of the Hulk. Give him that, like, weird mohawk haircut and big claws. And hell yeah. I could not get Pitt soon enough. This is the uh, 2018 art school girl haircut. <laughs> <laughs> you got your full moon. The can Speaking of full moons, man, that's like... He's tracing a, a saucer or something to get that giant circle. That's that's math. That is not coming off a template. There's that George Perez piece. Yes, 
Yeah, I remember this real distinctly, you know. Like I said, I would pour over every one of these pages, so it was... Everything meant something. Absolutely, and this editorial was a big deal. He had such a distinct voice, McFarlane, and he he put it down on paper reasonably well. We knew this voice. We knew this voice from uh, from the, the back of the Spider-Man pages. We knew this voice from the Ego column. And, you know, he, he carries that on, man. There was no YouTube. There were no podcasts. I'll be honest. I almost skipped this editorial because, I mean, I've read lots of McFarlane stuff. Interviews, we interviewed him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like I, I knew this and I know this, what he's saying. And going back and reading this really was great. He's much more gracious, uh, I think, than he has sort of become over the years. Uh, giving credit to all kinds of stuff, including thanking Marvel and DC for giving him the opportunity to provide for his family, a living, large exposure of his talent, all that stuff, but then gives a lot of background on what brought him to this point and talks about different creators through the years and how they were exploited and kind of shown the door. You know, obviously comics, this is comics history. And he sums that up from a creator perspective really well, as you say, articulates his point of view extremely clearly in this editorial. And it really is this like, go for it. You know, it is a call to arms. He cites some of the stuff like the eclipses and Pacifics and First and these companies that tried it and, and gave creators alternatives and places where they could own and control their work and benefit from its exploitation. So this is a hell of an editorial. Like it covers a lot of ground and it really is like, by the end of this, I'm ready to sign up for the McFarlane army, man. This is good stuff. <laughs> when he talks about stuff like the Spawn Spider-Man crossover. And, yes. and, and I can't believe that hasn't happened. Mentioned in this editorial, think of all the crossovers. Marvel hires guys for Heroes Reborn. How has there not been a Spawn Spider-Man crossover? Do you think it's McFarlane that was like, after after this first issue goes out and sells $2 million and he's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I was, I was going to get to, like, this... The graciousness, what we're seeing on the page, is an untested, right? You know, venture, straight up hedging. This is a hedging editorial because these guys, whatever risks they're taking, you think Marvel ain't going to take them back, man? If if uh, if this doesn't work out, and they're like, can I can I draw Spider Man again? You think Marvel isn't going to freaking lick their ball sacks to get them back on board? So. You don't want to fully burn the bridge. Yeah, a couple more things I want to call out are the people that he names as, uh, you know, people working at different companies. Um, Liefeld, Lee, Silvestri, Larson, Portacio, Valentino, the you know, all, all of your image guys. But Claremont, Miller, Moore, Simonson, Keown, Byrne, Barron, Gaiman, Romita, Brayfogel. I love seeing Brayfogel's name in there. Gerber, Leighton, Perez, Gorel, and, and of course, Kirby. And his idea here is that by doing this, we're creating a level playing field where we can all make our creations and have them compete with things like Spider-Man. And his final sign-offs are the two things to do. One, don't screw your neighbor. And two, turn out the best damn comics that have ever been on the stands. This is a badass editorial. Of all these image, like, issue one editorials, this one has is, is got to be, if not, the, it's got to be the best one. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got that kind of, I mean, he's he runs a business and he's got a million employees, right? Uh, you got to inspire the troops, and he has that energy. And you you would hear the in in the interviews where people would be getting phone calls from McFarlane, uh, rah rah type phone calls. You know his relationship with Mike Grell, Rob Liefeld, Larson, uh, and it was always you know an inspirational kind of energy. Uh, when he was in our shoot interview, when he was dropping science on us, five pages a week. Five pages. It's going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to do, but you got to do it. Like, he's just, he's that kind of dude. You know, he's a coach. Can we take a look at this Malibu ad, man, and just talk about, <laughs> like, you know, we looked at an alpha. Like, let's look at an omega right here. Yeah, wow. <laughs> talk about being gifted something. Like, you know, Malibu gets a year to distribute these and just skim some percent off the sales. How cool is this right here, though, man? Evil Ernie, like, if we're going to give any props, let's give a couple of shouts to Brian Polito, who kept his copyrights, man. Because I don't see any of these other comics doing anything uh, afterwards. I guess Dinosaurs for Hire had, had a little sh bit of shit. You know what's in there? Ninja High School, Ben Dunn's, uh, you know, I mean, that thing's been around for a while, that early Mary manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this. There's a previews ad that has, like, Spawn and Wildcats on it. And whenever you flip the page, there's the Advanced Comics, which would have been Capital City, the other distributor, you know, previews to Diamond, Advanced Comics to Capital City. Those were your two big distributors. And I used to read Advanced Comics... Um, I can't remember where, like, Mike Mignola's Hellboy is serialized for a year in one of them. 
Uh, can't I remember. think it was Advance. But Advance was, was, you know, it was good to have multiple distributors. You know, like this is what's going to go belly up in a couple of years uh, after Spawn 1 is the industry collapses. It's the loss of all those distributors is a big part of that collapse. But uh, kind of neat to see like Advance here. Jimmy, nowadays, man, we have Bitcoin. But in 1991, 92, we had comic books. And you could call the insiders, man. You could call Jimmy the Greek at uh, 1-900-420, very apropos, news, and get hot tips on which number ones are coming out, man, which, what you need to buy and where your closest uh, comic Jeez. shop is. How they, I see these ads and I just think, like, how could they be successful enough to warrant this? How many people were calling this to be like, you got to buy 10 of everything Valiant publishes? <laughs> Only 95 cents per minute. Unbelievable. Updated twice each week. There's another snapshot of like, that is cutting edge news. Twice a week <laughs> updates. And the classic ads in the back. They, these ads, like this exact one right here, would be on one of the last uh, issues of Jim Lee's X-Men. So it's like a Jim Lee X-Men, but it has an ad for this. Talk about a great little piece of real estate when it comes to advertising your uh, your creator-owned efforts. That was a big piece of my comics education would just be read every single thing on these ads and figure out uh, comics history from them. Sure. You know, I don't know that they actually translated to any useful knowledge, but I poured over them for sure trying to figure out what was coming out and how I could get my hands on it. What I had to have. <laughs> my had, fix. Had to give Spawn <laughs> 1 a look under the microscope. Man, this is cartoonist kayfabe. It's a classic issue. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something that left a mark on me. One of those, you know historically one of those biggest comics that i anticipated before it came out and i stuck with spawn for a couple of years so you know i liked what i saw it's not going to be the last spawn comic that to get the kayfabe treatment man but it'll do for now ready yes. to get out of here jimmy kayfabers like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available what you got jim patreon.com slash jim rug go there find out of print zines and comics that you can download artwork uh scripts notes process basically patreon.com slash jim rug there's a link tree in the description uh below this video for all of my stuff including the patreon for the red room early adopters uh january 20th you're going to be able to order the actual physical copies of uh red room uh that will be coming out like later this year uh all the other books are available through through that link tree so hit that link um you can subscribe to Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on, and it is going to be a big year, Ed. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them one more set of merchandise, Jimmy. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.